Hey guys, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here, live on YouTube the very first time. So this is a new experience for me. I'm not sure what to expect. I hope this works just like Facebook Live because I'm used to Facebook Live. I'm comfortable with Facebook Live. This is like new territory, you guys, and anytime you're in new territory, it's so scary, right? But that's good. Actually, that's okay because today, in this video, we are going to be talking about confidence, okay? And speaking English confidently, even if you still make mistakes. So let's just make sure that this video is gonna work. Oh, I have my first comment. Awesome, hi, Mohammed. This is great, you guys. I'm glad the comments are showing up. Um, unfortunately, I'm having this thing flash at the top of my screen that says, very bad connection. So I'm sorry, do you guys hear me okay? Hey Marcos, what is up? Good to see you here. Do you guys hear me okay? Hi Citra. Oh my gosh, look at you guys. Normally we're all on Facebook together. Now we're on YouTube. Let's see if this works. It still says very bad connection. Oh well, you know what? I'm just gonna make this video. We will make the most of it. I would love to see your commentary, your comments and everything you know, as I'm making the video, okay? And then please do me a favor and tell me in the comments what kinds of videos you'd like me to make that are live videos. Because you guys all know that I could talk for days about fluency and confidence and all kinds of stuff, right? Like the basics. But there's so many other things we could talk about. I mean, I could do like, I hadn't thought of this before. I really hadn't thought of this. You guys told me um, a year ago, like, Stephanie, you should get on YouTube. It took me so long to come here. Imagine if I had been doing all of my, um, you know, live videos here. I could have organized them into classes and done all kinds of things. And I think I can even share my screen um, when I use my computer. Right now, I'm just using my phone, but normally I can um, like share my screen on my computer so I can make slides. I can make like actual classes. I'm so excited. So, okay, so I guess you guys can hear me well because I have a mic on and um, you're interacting with me. Nobody said we can't hear you, so I'm assuming you can hear me. Okay, good, because like I said, this is the first video I'm making and I'm like nervous that it, something's gonna go wrong. But that's how life is, right? Something always goes wrong, especially when it's the first time that you're doing something. Cool. So I see some people are in Brazil, some people are in Germany. Where else are you guys watching from? This is so fun. Okay, so let me ask you guys a question. When you're speaking English, do you feel confident, okay? Do you just open your mouth and speak, you know, even if your sentences don't really come together well, okay? So Tahir says, I'm really struggling in, in pronunciation and accent. Okay, so that's something we could definitely talk about. Marco says, culture, news, and so on. Yeah, hey, we could talk about that. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, really venturing out and talking more about just life things um, because those discussions, I think, are fun and they can really help you guys with, um, you know, learning new vocabulary and just interacting in English. So Marco says, I don't feel shy. Okay, good. So Marco, what about when you're in like a high stress situation? Like when you're giving, you know, leading a meeting at work or when you are, you know, interviewing for a position or something like that, you know, not just casual conversation, but when there's something at risk or at stake, you know, something you could lose. So Merv says, I don't feel confident. Okay. So the thing is, Oh, and Kat says, I don't have issues with talking to someone in English, but when it comes to specific vocabulary, then it gets scary. Well, that's called jargon, Kat. And you know what? If you don't know specific jargon, um, you know, in English for something specific, then you don't know it. Like, don't freak out. For example, if I go into my dad's garage, I don't know what half the things in there are called because it has to do with like mechanics and stuff like that. Sorry guys, I keep looking there and there and there, like there's comments flying around, um, so I apologize. So anyways, uh, yeah, like I don't know all kinds of vocabulary about everything either. So if I don't know what something's called, I just say that thing or what's that or something like that. So, you know, don't let that rob your confidence. Okay, 
Cool. So um, speaking confidently, any time that there, you know, there's a few things that go on here, right? Um, some people, it's just like they're born with confidence. You know, you, they just don't struggle with confidence. They can just speak, say their mind or whatever. And then there's other people who measure their words a lot more. They really think before they speak. And maybe they think too much. Maybe they overthink things and they don't, you know, say something even though they have a really good point to make. Okay, because they lack confidence. Now, some people, some of you even, you're probably maybe very confident when you speak your native language, but then when you speak in English, all of a sudden you clam up and you're just like, oh my gosh, like they're gonna hear my accent, they're gonna hear my bad pronunciation, they're gonna hear me make a mistake. Yes, Nishan, overthinking totally kills it. So you guys have to understand that everybody struggles with a lack of confidence in one way or another, you know, for you guys, maybe it's with English for other people. It could be with, you know, public speaking in general, or who knows what, maybe, you know, guys like they lack confidence when they're dating girls and they just are like, I don't know if I'm doing this right or saying the right thing or girls too. If they're dating guys, maybe they're like, oh my gosh, what should I say? What should I do? What is he expecting? You know, it can be really a frustrating thing. But what we have to realize about confidence is that usually it's all in our head, right? So if you don't speak English, English confidently, okay, it's because you probably have some kind of fear, right? And your fear might be rational or irrational. You know, like if you speak poorly at a job interview, you might not get the job. That is a reality, so you have that fear. Okay, but if you're just worried about, you know, strangers judging you 24 seven over your communication skills, then that's a little bit of an irrational fear because the truth is, while you're worried about what other people think of you, other people are worried about what you think of them, right? It's crazy how this works, but you just have to remember that. So when you're sitting there, you know, talking to somebody in English and you're just like, is, you know, am I messing up? What are they thinking of me? The person you're talking to is probably going, oh my gosh, do I look fat in the, these clothes? Am I too tall? Am I too short? So yeah, <laughs> Marco says, the only important thing is that who listen to me would understand what I tell. Yes, and that should be our goal. That is the goal of communication. It should be about people understanding you and you making your point clear. I have seen people um, speak English very badly with absolute confidence because they're just like, I don't care. I'm learning. I'm, you know, I just, I don't care. You know, they don't care. That's the secret to speaking confidently. You have to not care what other people think about you or about your English. You just have to speak it. When we, when we lack confidence, it's because we are overthinking everything. We're thinking too much about what other people think of us. So yeah, anyways, I'm just like rambling on and on about this idea. It feels different doing a video on YouTube than on Facebook. I don't really know why because maybe I'm just so much more comfortable with it on Facebook or maybe because on my Facebook videos, there's usually a lot more interaction. So I just jump in whenever I can with the comments. But um, another thing I wanted to say is that um, improving your, your confidence, right? Like there's two parts. There's the practice part, and then there is the just psychological component of confidence, right? Sometimes you just have to tell yourself that everything is gonna be okay. And I know that sounds like really generic advice, but again, you have to analyze the thoughts that are going through your head. Are you having rational fears or irrational fears? What can you do about those fears? And then, practice when you're good at something you feel confident like when you get down to tie your shoes you're so confident when you tie your shoes that you don't even think about tying your shoes because you're like yeah i, I tie my shoes when you know you don't even think twice that's how you want it to be when you speak english but in order to get to that level of course you have to make sure that you're consistently practicing so let me ask you this what are you guys doing to consistently practice your english with others, okay? Active um, practice, active practice, not, um, oh, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to fix something there. Um, active practice, not uh, passive, okay? 
So someone was asking for my Skype ID. No, you guys, come on. There's so many of you. There's one of me. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, what are you guys doing to actively practice your English with other people? Now, in case you don't know or don't realize, right here on this channel, <laughs> there's James with the Deadpool accent. Awesome. Hi, James. Right here on this channel, you know, we have almost 3K people, 3,000 people at this point who are actively trying to improve their English. You could easily find a partner here. Just read the comments and then find somebody who writes a decent comment, you know, and writes something really nice and thoughtful and then go, hey, you know, that was a really thoughtful comment and then make a comment in return, something equally as thoughtful and then say, maybe we could practice together. What do you think? Okay, because if you just go and say, hey, wanna practice with me? You're not gonna find a good practice partner. <laughs> um, Nishan says, if I get to that level, my friends won't understand me and they'll treat me like an alien. Okay, Nishan, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, um, okay, because we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> you guys, if I miss your comments, you can put it again. Um, it's hard to keep up with all of them, so I apologize. But anyhow, it's true. Friends put a lot of pressure on you. And I talk about this in another video too. I'll have to link it up here later. Um, but friends put a lot of pressure on you sometimes. Like you can't win with them. You know, if you speak poorly in English, they make fun of you. But if you sound just like a native speaker, they go, oh, who do you think you are? Who you're trying to sound like a native speaker? You think you're better than us, right? And honestly, if those are the kinds of friends that you have, maybe you need to consider getting new friends. I mean, maybe that's kind of harsh, but I am kind of like an all or nothing kind of girl. Like I would not appreciate my friends doing that. Now I know that I think that tends to happen more in circles of men and guys, but I haven't seen it happen too much with women um, and girls. But if I had friends that were putting me down um, and making fun of a goal that I was trying to reach, I wouldn't put up with that. I'd be like, I'd give them the middle finger and I'd say, peace out. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but you have to choose your friends wisely. You have to surround yourself with people that are like, you know, have the same ambition and stuff that you do. Anyhow, guys, I'm gonna like turn this next part into a Q&A because I decided that it's too hard to stay on topic. You guys are bringing up some really great points and stuff. So if you guys have questions, let me just turn this into a Q&A and we can just talk about some random, random stuff. So Elver says, I realize that actors speak excellently fluently because they practice over and over again the same lines. Yes, but in their real life, ah, it, where's that comment? But in their real life, they also struggle sometimes remembering vocabulary and hesitate. Yes, Elver, great point. So exactly, you guys, when you're trying to learn with um, like a TV show or something, those actors practice those lines hundreds of times. That's why they say it the way they do. This video, if you watch it and compare it to my other YouTube videos, it's gonna be really different. I'm gonna say you know a lot more because that's a filler word that I use. I shouldn't, but I do. And my husband, when he edits my videos, he always has to say, oh my gosh, you said you know like 50 times in this video and he has to edit that and take it out. So regular speech, you guys, is different. I'm speaking spontaneously right now. I'm being repetitive, I'm using fillers. I'm pausing to think about what I'm going to say. It's not, you know, the same thing as giving a speech that you've prepared for or doing lines and acting and something that you've prepared for. So you have to know that. And you have to know that, you know, when you mess up with your English, you have permission to do that. Cat, yes, I have a husband. And I've mentioned that many times <laughs> in other videos. But maybe you're new here, so that's okay. Um, Merv says the difference between them is easy. It depends where you live. For instance, one of them is used in the USA. One of them is used in British. I don't know if you're responding to someone else there, Merv, because I wasn't talking about that. <laughs> At least the, unless I, I don't know, I'm confused. Um, have you ever been to India, Nishan? No, I haven't, but it is on my list of places to go. Actually, I mean, I want to go everywhere, you guys, but yeah, I have so many places I want to go. I have here, I'll tell you where I have been, okay? I have been, well, I was, I'm from California, born and raised there. Um, my first international trip was to Mexico and um, it says I have a very bad connection again. 
hopefully this is <laughs> hopefully this is working and all the comments went away anyways um hopefully hopefully this is working so anyways my first international trip was to mexico and then i went to argentina i lived there for four years and then i've traveled abroad to the uk ireland switzerland denmark and italy no i haven't been to turkey yet merv i want to go there though i want to go there definitely um <laughs> marco says I've been at home same. I think you meant um, that you've only ever been in your country, right? Brazil. So in English, we would say, I've never been out of the country or out of my country. Do you speak French? No, not at all. <laughs> um, oh, Marco, they're speaking, talking about the difference between cookies and biscuits. Yeah, you guys, there's so many different words. When I was in the UK and Ireland, I was like, I don't understand what these people are saying. So Elver says, I don't like to lose completely my accent because I guess, oh, hang on. Because I guess sounds exotic. <laughs> like when gringos speak my language, Spanish, but I want to speak excellent, good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think that's really great because, you know, some people, they want to sound exactly like a native speaker. And I think that's a good goal, too. But a lot of times it's because they're trying to hide their own accent. And I say, you know, why are you trying to hide your accent? You should be proud of where you're from. Be proud that you learned English. Don't try to cover your accent. Let it be. Let it exist, you know. But um, at the same time, you know, you want to make sure you're speaking clearly. Some people have such strong accents. It's like you can't understand what they're saying. Okay, Jaws Dan, have you been to Brazil? Not yet. I really want to go to Brazil. Uh, it's been on my like to-do list for years. And um, I was in Argentina for four years, so I was so close I could have gone, but it just never worked out. So, okay, I'm gonna to reply to Ronnie. Ronnie's in North Korea. It's kind of hard to find a practice here. Ronnie, watch the video that I did on how to practice with native speakers, okay? I made a video about that. You can use the same strategies there to practice with non-native um, speakers, okay? Use the internet. It does not matter where you live. As long as you have the internet, you can practice. And I will link a guide in the description later. I made a guide on how to find practice partners, okay? Um, it's on my website, englishfulltime.com. Um, Erin says, I saw your interview with that person, uh, her name is Hadar, and who was not a native speaker of English, but now she speaks like a native and is an accent coach. Yeah, she's awesome. You guys should definitely subscribe to her channel. Okay, my name is Stephanie. Stephanie. And here's something for you guys to keep in mind. You Spanish speakers, it's not... Estefani. That's like Spanish, okay? But it's in English, you have to take off the E eh at the beginning and just say Stephanie. Um, okay, Kat says, people say my voice changed when I speak English, Spanish, or Portuguese. It's because I really try to imitate the tone. They say the same thing about me, Kat. When I speak Spanish, people go, whoa, you sound different in Spanish. Rashad says, hi coach, I don't care about how my accent, I just wanna be sure that I'm not repeating many silly mistakes in the same talk or conversation. Yes, and Rashad, you will improve with practice, my friend. Lots and lots of practice. Are you practicing? Have you been practicing? Um, <laughs> Marcos, corruption, the world is full of corruption. Oh my gosh, don't get me started. <laughs> Yeah, Rashad, you are working with a great coach. And you need to schedule some more sessions with me. Okay. Um, hi, Ronald from Venezuela, but living in Brazil. Ronald, so you speak Spanish and did you learn um, Portuguese too? Speak Spanish with us. Okay, I will, but somebody has to volunteer by asking me a question in Spanish and then I'll start speaking Spanish, okay? So ask me a question in Spanish and then I'll reply. And you guys will see, the Spanish speakers will see that I still make some mistakes, but it doesn't matter. It's about confidence. It's about speaking confidently. So Ron, okay, cool. Your second language is Portuguese. I think 
that should be hace cuántos años <risa> hace cuántos años que estás casada hace cuatro años hace cuatro años que estoy casada de dónde eres yo soy de California <risa> good keep the keep the questions coming <risa> this is it's a lot funner than Funner is such a bad... You're not supposed to say funner, you guys. I'm an English coach. Anyways, it's a lot more fun. Let me see. Um, ¿Cuánto tiempo tienes enseñando inglés? Ah, muchos años. Yo empecé en 2014, creo, pero antes de eso estaba enseñando español. Y también estaba dando clases de matemáticas. Así que hace, hace como casi 10 años que enseño, <ríe> que soy maestra. Pero ahora no soy como yo no me digo maestra, me digo coach porque una ma maestra enseña lo básico, lo avanzado yo ayudo a la gente a usar el inglés en su vida a mejorar, no sé, su carrera o hacer muchas cosas así no, no tengo hijos um, ¿qué te parece el Trump? Eh, no tengo comentarios sobre él. <laughs> si no, voy a empezar una guerra acá en mi canal y no, I'm not like for him or against him. I'm just like, ah, oh, this isn't happening. But it is, it's what, 2017? Para ti, ¿cuál es difícil, inglés o español? Wow, we have a lot of Spanish speakers on this. Sorry to everybody who's not a Spanish speaker. Hopefully you're enjoying me watching, or uh, speaking another language. Um, no, el español obviamente es más difícil para mí porque no es mi primer idioma. Empecé a estudiar el español cuando tenía 14 años. Um, tan -tan. I know, sorry, Cedra. She's like, it's turning into a Spanish class. Well, I keep telling people I owe you guys a video in Spanish and I really do. Sí, mi español es muy parecido al de Argentina porque eh, yo viví cuatro años ahí. Tu español es flawless. Thank you, Rafael. En serio, hasta acento argentino tienes. Ya. Yeah. Bueno, porque mi marido es argentino y yo viví ahí cuatro años y además mi familia, pequeña detalle, es argentina. Pero no me enseñaron el español, por eso lo tuve que aprender. Tengo 26. Pero en mi mente ya tengo 27. No, no sé por qué, pero en mi mente es como si ya tuviera 27. <laughs> Sorry, Nijan. He's like, yeah, there's so many Spanish speakers. You guys, what do you think about me starting a channel in Spanish for... I don't know what. I'm just kidding. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, that would be a really great way for me to practice my Spanish because I'm lazy, you guys. My husband speaks English and Spanish. I speak English and Spanish, but I get really lazy and we just end up speaking English all the time. So I was thinking if I make a YouTube channel in Spanish, that will force me to keep making it better. So that's a tip for you guys. If you want to really, really, really improve your English, Start a project in English. I don't care if it's an Instagram account. Ugh, I can't talk. Instagram account or a uh, Facebook page or YouTube channel. And don't make it, oh, learn English. You know, that's too easy. Do something about your passion in, um, ugh, I can't talk. Do something about your passion, but do it in English. So if you start a YouTube channel in English, Make it about diet and nutrition and exercise if that's what you're into or who, who knows, whatever, okay? So that's just a quick idea for you guys. <laughs> Sería bueno que hagas un video con los diferentes acentos de Estados Unidos. I mean, yeah, but you guys, there are people that have already made those videos like with different accents from the US and they're like actors. So their accents are gonna be better than mine. <laughs> Life in English. I stand up for the rights of lazy people. I'm a lazy, a proud lazy dude. Nah, not really. You're a funny dude. Um, have I traveled overseas to teach English? I'm in Italy right now and I teach, well, I don't teach English. You guys, I'm a coach. There's a difference. Um, and yeah, I am. I teach online. I run online programs. So that, I. but it's not like going overseas to teach in the traditional sense because 
I'm an entrepreneur and I wanted to start my own business. Yes, Juan, you can be a YouTuber. <laughs> Lo que a ti más te gusta, el Neymar o el Cavani como jugador. You know what? I don't, I don't follow any soccer. The only reason I know of those dudes is because I've heard my husband say Neymar, but I don't even know what his face looks like. So sorry to disappoint you guys. I just know que soy de Boca because he is. And so I have to be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. English is very hard to learn for me. So here's why it's hard for you, Ronald, because right now you've probably been learning in a traditional sense. Okay. I should do these videos more often. This is fun, right? Okay, wait. You've probably been learning English in a traditional sense and traditional classes are boring. Very, very, very boring, okay? And so if you really want to improve your English, you have to do it in a different way. <laughs> Sorry, there's so many comments, you guys. I'm missing some of them. I will go back and I can reply to some of these later, okay, after the video. But you need to start using English on a daily basis to do things that you love and enjoy and talking with people that you love and enjoy. Okay. Um, wait, that sounds weird. Talking with people that you love and enjoy. That sounds a little strange. No, talking with people that, that you enjoy talking to. Oh, I'm getting tongue twisted. Anyways, by doing that, you're going to have great experiences. Like if I was in the U S studying Italian in a regular traditional class, I would be like, Oh, this is so boring. You just conjugate verbs. If you're a beginner, you conjugate verbs. If you're an intermediate student, you conjugate verbs. If you're an advanced student, you conjugate verbs. And it's just like, oh, when does it end, you know? And that's why people, you know, are in these English institutes, maybe many of you are, for seven years, ten years, and you still don't feel fluent, okay? Or confident. Now, on the other hand, if you would just, you know, for example, start using English with English speakers pretty much since day one, all of a sudden you'd be like, oh my gosh, I get to talk with real people and it'd be so much more exciting. Okay. So that's why like with the coaching that I do, my job is to surround you guys um, and especially my coaching clients and my students, surround them with English, get them in touch with native speakers, etc., so they can, you know, have a real reason for using English. So uh, an active reason, not just, you know, being passive and reading stuff, but networking with English speakers, using English to move their careers forward, etc. Um, let's see. In this moment, I'm in Italy. <laughs> hey, thank you. Someone's like, press the like button, help her grow her channel. Yeah, help her grow her channel. Thanks, guys. I was actually just thinking that I might start, um, you know, coming live on here regularly throughout the week and I can schedule them in advance. You guys have always asked me, schedule these things in advance. Um, but now I just might, because I really do want to grow this channel. This is nice. Um, okay, Nishan says, where did you get the idea to be an English coach? Um, and then they, and then Ronald asked how I learned Spanish. So those are great questions. Yeah, I can talk about all of that. Okay. So first I learned Spanish because my family, they are Spanish speakers, but they didn't teach me Spanish. So I felt like I was missing a part of my identity that like lit a fire under my ass basically to really learn Spanish. I started studying in an immersion program when I was 14. I did that for three years and I studied in college, paid thousands of dollars to get, you know, my degree as a, you know, majored in Spanish, but I dropped out of college. You guys, I don't know if you know this, but I, I hated the program. It was bullshit. It was really bad. I was like, I don't want a degree from this university because I'm not going to be proud. Normally when you have a degree, you're like, oh yeah, and I worked really hard and I got this degree. My classes were easy. The teachers, like, I, it was just really bad. So I was like, I don't want this. I will make my own way in life. Um, I will get fluent in Spanish some other way because all that traditional education was not working for me. And I was like, I'll, I'll either go back to college later or I'll start my own business or do something. I've always kind of been like a little rebel like that. But anyways, um, I went to Argentina. I ended up meeting my husband. I lived there for four years and 
that is how I got fluent. But don't think that you have to go to an English speaking country to get fluent, okay? That was just my personal limitation because I was not mingling with like Spanish speakers online or in my hometown or anything like that. I was really shy, um, not in English, just in Spanish. <laughs> I was really shy and that was holding me back. So that's why now I help you guys overcome your issues with confidence because not having confidence is going to rob you of so many opportunities. It's crazy, okay? So anyhow, that's that. And then I came up with this idea to coach people with their English because I understood the journey of going from not speaking a language to then speaking it fluently and confidently and using the language to you know work, make money. Um, I worked in a sales position for a national US company and I would speak with Spanish speaking clients and you know, I did a, a whole bunch of, you know, work and sales in Spanish and it was difficult because it wasn't my native language. So then I was like, whoa, you know, English is a global language. There are so many people struggling not just to master this language, but to really use it to advance their life and their career, to immigrate to another country, etc. And I was like, I could really help these people. I've done a lot of traveling. I've learned a language myself. You know, I'm I know about building business and stuff like this and getting jobs and marketing yourself to whatever, beat the competition. I mean, there's lots of ways we could say it. So then I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna be an English coach. And I basically created this role for myself. The programs that I run, the things that I do, it's not like they've been done before. I don't do cookie cutter English programs where it's like, oh, now we're gonna work on your pronunciation. You kind of have to work on your pronunciation with other YouTube channels and English teachers. I don't focus on that because I have something that I feel is more valuable and that's what I try to focus on. So thank you for asking those lovely questions. <laughs> okay make videos um bba says please make videos having minimum 30 minute duration i will try that way you guys can shadow these videos so yeah i'm gonna make this a q and a um like i'll call it a q and a video probably when i end it and then maybe i'll make like a series of these Um, Harunis says, I live in Turkey and I am fluent in English. When I speak, uh, people think I am not Turkish and they ask me where I come from. That's awesome. The same thing happens when I speak Spanish. People go, where are you from? Are you from Costa Rica? Are you from Argentina? Are you from Spain? It depends. And this is funny. I have to tell you guys this. When I am in Argentina, people think I'm from Costa Rica or Spain because they know I don't sound exactly like someone from Argentina, but very close. But when I'm talking with like a Mexican in California, they go, oh, you're from Argentina. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So it's just really funny. Hey, Renee, what's up, man? Um, okay, cool. So I caught up with all your questions. Oh, wait. Hang on. Uh, Life in English says, there's something about the way English sounds that made me fall in love with the language. And now that I've heard you speaking Spanish, <laughs> I think I just found the next, <laughs> my next thing in life. Awesome, yeah. You guys, um, I talked with one of my new students um, two days ago, her name is Sarah and she's living in Dubai. And this girl's English is so beautiful. Shout out to Sarah and listen, she learned English 100% online, online. Can you believe that? Like she never did a traditional class. She never had a teacher. That is some serious dedication. I mean, the internet has so much information. I know people that have learned how to code online just by watching videos. They never had a teacher, you know? So just realize you guys, you have so many amazing resources. Well, you probably do realize this, but there are so many amazing resources on the internet. Um, Aymano says, how can I improve my writing skills in English? I just made a video on that and it was pretty generic because I wanted to make like a video where I explain where you start and then eventually make, um, I don't know, more detailed videos about improving writing, but that would be a good place for you to start at. Because if you literally have no idea how to improve your writing, then all that information is in that video. <laughs> 
Oh, cool, Kat, you've learned just online too? Nice. Well, now she is one of my students, so now she is in actually investing money <laughs> in her English, but that's also because, like I said, I'm not like actually teaching English. Right now I'm doing a program, it's not open, you guys, but I'll reopen it later this um, year. It's networking with native speakers, so it's like personal and professional development in English and connecting everyone to the world or connecting my students to the world of native English speakers and getting them talking with them. So yeah, I won't say too much about that because I don't want this to turn into like a commercial. <laughs> oh, will there be an interview with Sarah? Do you want there to be an interview with Sarah John? Maybe I could ask her if she would like to be interviewed. Um, I have an interview coming out soon with Renee, who is also one of my students. And I think he was just on here when I was like, hi Renee. <laughs> and Renee is really awesome. His English has really improved and you guys are gonna get to see that in the video. Um, do you have any Turkish friends? Yes, I have, as of right now, one Turkish friend. <laughs> Mike says, in my opinion, learning this language in a country where it is spoken is the best option. I don't know about the best option. I think it's a good option, um, but really you just, like we just talked about Sarah who and Kat who learned English online. A lot of it has to, a lot of it depends I think on your own motivation, um, but yeah. And wait, oh, sorry, I missed what you said before that. You said, I know that it is totally possible to learn a language being in a country where it is not spoken, although I don't think this is the best approach. Usually the methods used in schools are really, really boring. Yeah, but you have to know, Mike, even if you, like I know people who have gone to the US, paid thousands of dollars to study in like a, a study abroad international English school they use the same methods. They use worksheets and textbooks and this and that. And you're studying with a bunch of other students who are from other countries. It's not like you're with native speakers all of a sudden. You talk with native speakers if you go to the park and you mingle with them, but that's on you, you know? And some people don't have the confidence for that. Just because you're in a country with native English speakers, a lot of people isolate themselves. So honestly, I think the best option, I don't know, I think that it's different for each person. And I'm glad that the internet exists. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so glad we have this option because, you know, several years ago, I would have, if I wanted to teach English, I would have had to choose one place and teach it. Now I can teach it to people all over the world. And I'm just sitting here at my Airbnb in Italy. <laughs> Uh, Renee says, do you think there's a maximum age for starting to learn a new language? I don't because I've seen people, you know, learning languages in their 50s and 60s and 70s. I think it keeps your mind sharp. So no matter how old you get, you can do it. But really, you have to have the right motivation and the right learning structure because motivation, with motivation, you can learn things twice as fast, 10 times as fast. Without motivation, you can you know, be trying to learn English for 10 years and never achieve it. So motivation is huge. Um, and that's why if you're kind of feeling like, oh, learning English is boring and oh, like frustrated, it's probably because you don't know your why. You don't really understand why you're learning English and you don't understand your motivation. You don't know what it is and maybe you don't have a motivation. But here's the thing. Um, if you want to immigrate to an English speaking country, if you want to get a job at a multinational you know, company that's based in an English speaking country, if you want to work with English speaking clients, right there you should recognize that that should be your motivation. And so you should tie your results with English directly to your future, you know, and hopefully that wanting a better future will be enough motivation. I mean, that's my motivation for the work that I do. I want a better future. Just like you guys study English because you want a better future. So since I am I have my, I have a clear understanding of why I do the work that I do, that's what helps me get up every day, work hard, you know, and put my work before entertainment, sometimes even before my social life. Well, mostly <laughs> it's like that. So anyways. Um, Yes, Renee, your why is the most important stuff in any goal. If you don't understand your why, if you don't have a why, you don't have motivation. And without motivation, you can't achieve things. 
Um, Isaac, yes, I will be adding subtitles to this video. It's a live video. I can't add subtitles right now because I'm live. But if you'll notice, all of my videos have subtitles. Um, Merv says, I have a newborn cousin. Is it suitable to teach him a new language? Sure, why not? It might be fun. Do you have master? Are you asking if I have a master's degree? No, I talked about this earlier. I don't even have a college degree. <laughs> I was this close to getting it. I was six months away and I didn't want it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the program. So I said, screw this. I'm going to do something else. And I built a business. So I was a rebel and this doesn't work for everybody, but I really wanted to prove, I think to myself and to other people that there there are many ways to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Sometimes you can go the traditional route and sometimes you don't have to. You know, my teaching style, my coaching style is not traditional, but everything I've done is pretty untraditional too. I met my husband and I married him five months later. That's not very traditional. I got married in like a black and white wedding, short, a short wedding dress. That's not traditional. I just like breaking the norm, you guys, because if not, we all get stuck in traditions and then we all try to force other people to you know meet certain standards just because we had to you know like oh I had to go to school for you know four years to get my degree so everyone else has to do that too and I don't like that way of thinking so now we're getting into philosophy um, <laughs> Kat says this is funny I decided to learn English because I got fed up with waiting for people to translate my favorite TV shows and when I realized I was in love with the English language. Yes, that's a great, um, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Ronnie says, how can you talk that long without drinking water? I am getting thirsty and I am gonna shut this off in a second. But you guys, I've like I said, I've been working in education for a long time. I've had to do like seven classes back to back talking for an hour in each class. That's, it's hard. I don't, I'm glad I don't have to do that now but I drank a lot of water already. So John says, what if I understand you 100% but have some speaking problems? So what about it? <laughs> you're, I know what you're asking. You're asking like, what should I do or what does that mean? But it helps to be more specific with your questions. Um, it's just lack of practice. <laughs> Um, Mike says, I've been learning English for over seven years. I can understand well, but I can't speak in the same level I can understand. And that is a common problem. And that's also lack of interaction, lack of practice. It's funny when you guys tell me in detail your symptoms of what you're experiencing, I pretty much know why that's going on, you know, and I can, you know, <laughs> I can like diagnose it, even though you haven't really told me why. It's like you tell me what's going on with your English and I can explain why. And obviously saying lack of practice, that's very general, but I could go deeper into it. But I can't right now because there's a lot of you guys watching and, you know. Um, so Ermat says, I remember you talking about having a hard time letting yourself make mistakes and not beating yourself up for them. You know, that really resonated with me. We're so in the same boat for that. Yeah, and you know, Irma, I just recently really made a breakthrough there. Actually, here in Italy, I've been here for like five weeks, but my Spanish, you guys saw earlier in the video, it's pretty good, right? Okay, even having that high level I would still freak out and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to mess up or whatever. And that's why it's all in our head and we need to, you know, give ourselves credit and just decide. There literally has to be a decision where you decide to not care about making mistakes. Trust me, you're going to feel so free after you decide to do it. Don't apologize for your English ever again. So I'm scrolling up to see if there's, um, dun, dun, dun. yeah, cool. I'm all caught up. I like this. I'm, I'm caught up with your guys' stuff. Okay. How to pronounce gotta like that. Gotta. 
<laughs> gotta, da, da. Do you see how my tongue flaps? Gotta, gotta. Hopefully that's helpful. We can do more of those fabulous pronunciation videos, you guys, if you want. I can go live and I'll stick my face right in the camera. <laughs> I'll show you how everything moves. Um, Fernando, that's a great question and I love that expression. What does the expression blind leading the blind mean? It means one idiot leading other idiots. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like somebody who thinks they know about something but they don't and then they're trying to teach other people how to do something that they themselves don't even understand. This goes on a lot since you guys know I'm an entrepreneur and I built my own like online business. This goes on a lot in the entrepreneurial world. People that have not made any money online or have not been successful at all try and teach other people how to do it. That's like the blind leading the blind. You can't teach something unless you've achieved it first which is also kind of interesting when you think in terms of language learning, because how can you help someone improve their fluency if you've never learned another language yourself and improved your fluency and gone through that journey, right? Kind of makes you think. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Elio says, I want to be in your club. Oh, I don't call it a club, but thank you. Are you talking about my online English program? I'll let you guys know when it's ready um, or when enrollment opens again. But you probably have to sign up at EnglishFullTime.com. I email everybody that information. Um, okay, Red says, many people want to talk to English speakers, but they can't find them because English speakers don't need other languages because they know English. Red. I made a program that helps people do that. You guys just don't know where to look, how to interact with English speakers. You don't know where to find us. So I made an entire program and my students are doing the program right now and they're having amazing success. Nazarena from Italy just posted in our private group the other day. She was like, oh my gosh, it's only day five and I already met this person who's coming to Italy to my town, you know, in October and they want me to be their tour guide you know, and show them around. And she's already making friends with people online and speaking English with them. So it's possible, but the problem, like I said, is you guys don't know where to find English speakers. And, and even if you knew, you wouldn't, you probably don't have a very good idea of how to interact with us so that we'll talk with you. Because just like you said, it's like, we're not trying to learn your language. So anyhow, the program, is called networking with native speakers and it reopens probably in October. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> I'm trying not to turn this into a commercial, you guys. Um, let me see. Successful woman <laughs> says, as for me, my obstacles are exactly with the lack of expressing myself properly. Yes, I can hold a conversation, but if you choose random topic to discuss about it, I might find difficulties. You might, but think about this. If somebody wanted to talk to me about the mysteries of outer space, I would probably listen to most of what they have to say because I don't really think about that topic. I don't discuss that topic with anybody else. I don't know the right vocabulary. Sometimes I confuse astronomy and astrology because I just keep forgetting which one's which and I have to sit there and think, oh no, this one's that one, this one's that one. okay? So, it, that probably happens to you in your native language. You know, you struggle to know what, you know, have discussions even in your native language about topics you simply don't care about, right? So you guys you have to realize that a lot of these struggles that you have in English, you have them in your native language, but you're just more aware of them in English because you feel more guilty. Like, oh, communication should be easier. But really, someone's trying might be trying to talk to you about a topic you have no interest in and you don't care about. Why would you want to talk about that? Okay, guys, um, I'm going to wrap up this video. This has been such an awesome session. This was my first live video on YouTube. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching, for hanging out, for asking questions. Uh, feel free to, yes, share this channel around or subscribe or whatever. <laughs> I would love to grow an awesome community here so we can have more of these live sessions. So that's it. Take care and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.